I'm a psychic. He is a sympathetic pooper. There's a lot of strange stuff going on around here. Ghosts. Not necessarily ghosts. But probably ghosts. No more embarrassing nicknames. We can't just stop doing bits we've been doing for 10 years. My name's Sean Spencer. This is my partner, Lego, my ego. No. Gus, we're home. You can give me some chewy. <laughs>
he walks through. So he's actually uh, in the police station. So he's actually in almost a hundred episodes. Uh, and, and it seems like he wrote that many. So we wrote this script and finished it. We were ready to go. And then it became about schedules and getting all these really talented people in at the same time. So we ended up pushing that uh, um, for many months. And then we ended up, uh, we shot the movie. And when everybody was ready, we everybody sort of ran in to do it. And now we're finished it a year ago. So it's been quite a wait for us, um, but I think a worthwhile one because uh, I think it's it's more pertinent now than it ever was. And I think the world needs sort of the, the happiness and the joy and the sort of positivity that, that, that we do on our show every week. So, you know, the wait has been long. It's, uh, we wish everyone could have saw it right away but we were really excited that, uh, that there's a buildup to it, you know, and we didn't even know there was something called the Peacock when uh, we started <laughs> writing this. <laughs> and, uh, and now we're going to take the entire Peacock on our shoulders and carry it to success. So it's a, uh, it's kind of a daunting, exciting, uh, task. Chris, I mean, what were you guys looking to accomplish in this, in the second movie, which is, has the best title, Psych 2, colon, Lassie Come Home. <laughs> um, yeah, what were you guys looking to accomplish in, in this in the film? Um, look, we're, we're trying to accomplish the same thing we're always trying to accomplish, which is um, giving our core fans everything they expect, um, not forgetting anything that might disappoint them if it wasn't in there, uh, and having a blast doing it, and having a bit of a reunion and a great time, and seeing our family again. Um, and most importantly, obviously, Tim was the anchor of that for this movie. Mm -hmm. So that was it. We wanted to um, we wanted to protect Tim. We wanted to make sure he had a great time. Uh, this was going to be uh, the most amount of time that he had spent in front of a camera um, since his stroke. And we wanted to protect that and make sure that he was back in the saddle and, and making us laugh and having fun and feeling good about himself. Um, and it all worked out uh, perfectly. So we're we're pleased about that. Maggie, like, what was it like just having that story centered around the character of Lasser? I mean, you got to work, you, you know, Juliet and Lassie were like partners in crime for yeah. most of Psych. So just curious, like what it was like to have a story centered around him and also have to have your friend back for yeah. you know, a good portion. I, mean, we, I, I missed him so much when uh, we were doing the the first movie. I mean, we all did, obviously, but yeah, he's my he's my partner, and so uh, it felt, and I, it felt to all of us like there was this there was this missing piece, and so it was like everybody got to come back together and and feel whole again. But I I I know for me, I mean, it, it was it was incredibly emotional, um, just because I mean. I, the scenes alone, but but uh, him being my partner, Psych is for me. He's the other part of it, like for me to feel, you know, um, a hole in it. So it was, it was, it was. I uh, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. But also, I have to like Steve when we were we were doing scenes together. Um, Steve gave Tim and I a lot of freedom to, uh, you know be be at one point he actually said just be Maggie and Tim in this scene <laughs> um and neither one of us could get through it because we were both so emotional um because it was it was such a moment and honestly uh, he's so good in this movie um and I think all of us just we felt we were all very present in it from the very 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 beginning and and felt every every step of it so uh, yeah, for me, it just felt like our whole family was was whole again. The moment that Tim actually walked onto the set in mm -hmm. Vancouver, that's a moment that I will never forget. I think for the entire cast, the entire crew, the whole Psych family, it was absolute joy because there was a there was a, a hole when we were filming the first movie. As much fun as we had doing it, Tim wasn't there, and it's not Psych without without Lassie. It's just it's a Psych a version of Psych, but it's not Psych. And when he walked through that door, it really really just touched us all to see, to see the power of his recovery, the power of his uh, perseverance in the midst of the struggle, will himself back to Vancouver onto the set of Psych was awe inspiring. One of those hard, very visceral memories, a deep memory I have from that first movie is when 
uh, when Juliet had to record her side of the phone call. And we didn't know whether it was gonna be a phone call or whether it was going to be a, um, a video chat call at that point. Um, but it was just her. I didn't work that day. Dulé was done. James was done. Corbin was done for the day. Um, but we all came back to the set because ugh. <laughs> we just wanted to be there just you know, on one side for Maggie because she had to carry that weight um, of her partner being missing for mm -hmm. that thing. But I also wanted to kind of be in that moment knowing that Tim's spirit and the spirit of Lassiter was there. And that was what was gonna carry us through that moment. And hopefully, you know, keep that momentum going to where we could be when they're singing him on to set as he walks in, um, assisted to join his family again up in Vancouver. And I think that that was a nice, really neat bookends of being there and then him being there. Um, so it's just really powerful. And I think it kind of just speaks to where the whole psych team has been as a family for 15 years. <laughs> so I have to say too, I will never, I will never forget that moment because I didn't know. I didn't know you all stayed. I didn't know everyone uh, was there. And I came, I remember coming around the corner to do that scene and I saw everybody. <laughs> you felt this, Maggie. You felt this. You What'd felt you say it. today? You felt this, Maggie. You felt this when you were <laughs> I felt it, but I, when I turned around and saw that everybody was there, I remember I, I that is psych. I mean, that is, that's, mm -hmm. that is us. Yeah. But on a lighter note, I will say when uh, on the, on the second movie, you know, of course, like you know, Tim is just now getting ready to start doing his scenes and this and that. So we're all excited and, and but we're all like a little careful and a little precious with it. And Tim, we're getting ready to rehearse a scene. And there's a little I guess, tradition that I stole from Josh Molina that I would go around and knock off people's people's uh, scripts out of their hands when we were rehearsing. Because <laughs> Josh Molina is a troublemaker and he likes to create trouble and he used to do it to me all the time. So I started doing it to everybody else. So we started to rehearse the first scene. And Tim just takes his time while we're there, makes his way over to me, and I'm here going over my lines. And next thing I know, <laughs> he knocks my sides out of my head. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but in that moment, it's, a, it's an okay. Yeah, let's go, let's have some fun. Tim is back, everybody. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about this new film. I feel like Sean and Gus in this film, they you know, make some potentially kind of life-changing discoveries that kind of come out over the course of this movie that will change relationships uh, with, you know, their significant others, their friends, with each other. Um, but they're also still Sean and Gus. Like, our, we love Sean and Gus. There's shenanigans that they always pull off and the antics, is, you know, behind. Um, what kinds of shenanigans can kind of fans expect from these two in this movie? Um, I guess I'll throw that to, to James and Julie to answer. Okay. Shenanigans. I mean, the word itself just kind of kind of covers the spectrum, doesn't it? Tomfoolery <laughs> and, and antics and shenanigans. They find themselves in situations where they have to to wear things that are ridiculous. Uh, they'll be on the run, bad guys. Uh, they'll stop and make jokes at inappropriate times. And like you said, uh, a couple of pretty big uh, life affirming moments kind of land on their heads while they're doing all of that. I should, I should add about one final footnote about that first day on, on set. Tim actually wore a dance belt under his suit. Um, and he had a I don't know if anyone knows that. I, I haven't shared that story uh, publicly until now. Yes. Yeah. It's inside scoop. Inside. He's not here to defend himself. Still doing big. Still doing, as, nervous, as nervous as he was on day one, first time getting back on the horse, he uh, suited up, you know? Steve? Um, yeah, I mean, Steve, a few years ago, you mentioned you kind of compared Psych to the Fast and Furious franchise, which I thought was kind of a... <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? Did that? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What I was saying there. That's you had the goal. You had the goal of making like a six-movie saga, right? First of all, has that changed? Does it sound like that has changed? 
Oh no, <laughs> you know, obviously uh, we don't quite get the, get the fan base that the Fast and Furious, but I think what I was probably saying Shut your is, drunken mouth, Steve. Shut your <laughs> drunken mouth. We are in talks right now for Psych the Ride at Universal Studios. What are you talking about? talking about that was going to be my question where's our ride yeah. well, you know, it's fun, so funny fun ride because we were we we're on universal lot for editing these movies and uh and so we we i would go in the park not not that i knew a, a gate i could sneak into the park from where our editing bay was i don't know that That's, that never happened but uh there there was a jurassic park ride and i go hey we did a dinosaur episode there's a mummy ride i go hey we did the mummy episode so one by one we kind of like all the pre-existing rides at universal so i only think it's natural that if they ever want to do a ride based on a basic cable tv show that's now on a <laughs> streaming service i think we'd probably be in the top 30 of choices that uh, that they would make <laughs> But I, I think what I said about Fast and Furious, which by the way, there's a Fast and Furious ride and we sort of, we did a, a car racing episode as well, which was our Fast and Furious. I think what I, what I liked about those movies is, and they turned, you know, it was just a, a movie about car racing and now they're flying, you know, convoys of cars over chasms and dropping them out of, uh, out of airplanes. So I was hoping that we could evolve these, the story to a point where, uh, where I want the movies not to feel just like an episode. I want them to feel bigger. Um, mm -hmm. And then we get our budget in and I go, okay, maybe a little smaller. Uh, and so we, we're trying, we're trying to expand everything that the, that the, show is you know uh, uh, to answer your your question as as well from the previous one is that this movie is far more emotional than i believe anything that that we've done especially in those scenes with maggie and tim and like you know what maggie didn't tell you is when when they were doing the scene as maggie and tim there was not a dry eye in the entire room it was it was as powerful for us you know almost as it was for them but you know it to me, I think there is some of our craziest, silly, silliest stuff. You know, I just I just watched the clips that they're releasing. And the, the first thing I thought is, oh my gosh, this is going to look really heavy. And then I realized there's actually two poop jokes in the clip. So I'm like, it, I just want to assure people that we're trying to get the balance. We're trying to balance a little bit of action, uh, a lot of heart, a lot of, you know, we love these characters so much, you know, that. that to see them evolve in, 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 in the ways that you hope they would and hopefully they surprise you a little bit and yet you know they're as soon as Sean and Gus get into a room they're going to start bantering about something that is not pertinent to the situation at hand at all and that's the fun of it all. There's some fantastic guest stars in this new movie I mean you have Joel McHale, uh, Sarah Chalk, Richard Schiff were they all psych fans how did they kind of come aboard uh this project. Uh, Steve, maybe Chris. Oh. Go for it, Steve. Tell us about oh. the evolution of those folks. <laughs> well, we, we were so lucky to get Sarah, who, by the way, is just one of the nicest, most genuine people. I, and she's up there in like Henry Winkler of, of fun, nice uh, people. And I always was a huge fan of hers. And there was a, a nice, really fun part for her. And uh, we were we were so happy to to get her, and I think because Scrubs kind of lived in the same space that we did, although on a much more larger eyeball level uh, when when we were airing, that that we were sort of these two shows that had sort of a similar uh, similar structure. So we we knew of each other's existence. Um, I'm going to assume she was a giant fan. Uh, and, uh, and she loved the show all along and, uh, and Richard Schiff worked with Dulé. I'll let you, uh, answer to that. And then Joel McHale, uh, was, was a really close friend of Tim's and worked with Maggie on a, on a wonderful show that everybody should check out, um, as well. So as for Joel and for Richard, I'll let Mags and, uh, and Dulé answer that. James, I think had this idea he reached out to me to reach out to Joel um, for this role, which you will see in the movie, um, related to Tim. And I, I reached out to Joel 
he immediately responded like in and he said he was he was emotional he was honored in every way he loved the show but tim is means so much to him and he was just in he is so busy so there was like he went to work and everybody went to work to try to to make all of it happen it happened uh and then it well we then it was it was how do we it was a surprise for tim okay like the on on set that we were we wanted to keep joel a secret for as long as we could to surprise Tim. But between press announcements and uh, travel and friendship and text, there, like, I, I was talking to Tim's wife and, and talking to Joel, and we just, we were like, is there any possible way? It seemed not so possible, but we managed to pull it off. Um, managed to get Joel to Vancouver uh without mm -hmm. tim knowing um and have this amazing moment and he was so he's so lovely i cannot say enough about him because he was in from the beginning um mostly you know and and for tim he was he would do anything for him and i think for as long as tim lives he'll 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 remember this moment um and Joel made it so special for him and for everybody. Quickly, in terms of our Richard Schiff, you know, he's been a friend and I consider him family since the West Wing days. And he would be in Vancouver often when we were filming Psych during the year. So he knew a lot of the cast. And when the role came up, I think it was Rodea or Steve or somebody to see if he'd be interested in doing it. And he read the script, thought it was hilarious. And he doesn't really get a chance to play, to do comedies that often. So he thought it would be great to come up and hang out with us for a little while. And he had a blast working with us. Cool. I mean, oh wait, there's there... one more. There's one oh, more yes. though too, because James uh, James brought Allison Miller over for a million little yes. things, and that was a that was such a great get for a really fun role that uh, that that you know the vital that I don't want to give away who she is in the movie, but uh, it happens very early, and she'll continue. But James, you want to talk a little bit about? Well, everybody loves uh, a basic cable comedy network drama crossover. Uh, <laughs> tale as old as time, it always works. Uh, I spent plenty of time uh, working with Allison, and I, I got to know her well enough uh, to know that she would dig what we do. She would uh, to to our set and have a good time. And again, uh, a very talented comedic actress who who doesn't get to do a lot of a comedy, so. Uh, it was fun for her, and it was fun for us, and, and anybody who watches uh, that show and is also a psych fan should get a kick out of uh, seeing us on screen playing different people. Speaking of a million little things, I mean, there's a joke in there about this is us and a million little things that was one of my favorite moments from this movie. <laughs> so hats yeah. off to I mean, that's you for... Yeah, writing that. We make fun of ourselves and we grab stuff um, out of the pop culture meta zeitgeist and there's there's never any any backlash because we've been doing it for forever and ever. But yeah, when Amelia debuted, everybody compared us to, to This Is Us. Uh, and we actually, you know, I have people on the street sometimes telling me how much they enjoy my work in This Is Us. They mistake you for Sterling K. Brown, right? That's right. They always <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. So it was a pretty easy joke to make. And uh, again, that's that's just how we do it. A little side note, though. Do you and Sterling have the same birthday? No, but it's close. Okay, okay. Yeah, look at that, see? Uh, but I think also with the cast that we have, the, the guest cast that we have, we we did a lot of jokes tipping our hat to their careers. So I think... Uh, like, which is what we always do on the show anyway. So I think uh, psych fans will get a little kick out of those little nuggets that get dropped throughout the movie. I mean, there are fans who have watched the show since day one. Um, and, and, you know, there are those who have also kind of discovered the show along the way. I mean, callbacks or um, Easter mm -hmm. eggs to like the pilot even or season one in this movie that, that you can tease that anybody wants to kind of... There's a giant callback to a, a seminal moment from the pilot that uh, I don't think will be lost on anyone, mostly because we've only been asked about it 
seven million times. So <laughs> we went in and dropped a bit. Uh, I think for me, it's it's as our, our the people that like the show, and I I feel, I feel weird saying our fan base. So I'll just say the people that watch the show and enjoy it. Probably because uh, Steve, it's probably because you you drop two octaves when you say fan base. Yeah, fan base. Fan nobody, base. Can hear, nobody can hear what you're saying. That's what you're saying. <laughs> so, well, so I, I guess we have a pretty solid fan base, and <laughs> I think that uh, they love, uh, they really enjoy when we when we when we reference those minuscule of moments in our show, and it's like there's nothing that's too obscure for us. So if we can go obscure on our own world, there, uh, I there were things in there that most people will miss. I was, uh, when we were first starting, I was ordering up props that were either replicas or the exact, uh, the exact things from old uh, episodes that, that there's one thing that's from the Think Tank episode that's in James's hand and that they even cut to, and it's a wide shot. And uh, it, <sighs> Oh, it's crazy the the things that that we that we do that, but someone someone's gonna find it and someone will see it and the, you know and our our show hopefully has that kind of if you watch it again you go oh my god that was over there and that thing was uh, was in there and it, it makes for you know a, a second or third fun viewing and I think that's why it was everybody the binge a so much because they remembered oh yeah and we're referencing and to see the reference for the first time but uh, i like i love to bury things from things that i love and uh and from our own stuff that i love and sometimes we we reference things that, that we wish we had done better the first time uh so we're not afraid to make fun of our own show and we're not afraid to also love our own show i guess i mean there are some pretty fantastic kind of catchphrases and lines that have come out of the show like some that kind of immediately come to mind for me is like suck it wait for it um I've heard it both ways um some of those are my favorites but which one is your personal favorite which line do you get kind of quoted back to you by fans like the most it's a uh, dynamite always oh, launch <laughs> <your phone. laughs> <laughs> what you talking about Willis oh no that's wrong show too <laughs> I, I don't have a ton of memorable lines people you know they when they email me or send a photograph they they say can you put that line down that yours in psych and we say which one is it and they go sean that's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was to me was just like uh the words with an exclamation after it you know but it's like that's what they want me to put on their their t-shirts sean that's the part, i'll give you a Mr. real admission and sir that's truth if if i had to bet my life on it at this exact moment i can't tell you if it's s-e-a-n or s-h-a-u-n or s-h-a-w-n <laughs> because you never because you never read a script ways. <laughs> <laughs> i honestly mind, God, mind, don't know mind. which one it is <laughs> and i love that that's a confusion forever that's my favorite anybody one. else know what it is I think it's steve you will and james you will yeah well i, I do Everybody, yeah, we all know how this goes. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Yes. We read the scripts, Corbin. See, we read the on your sides. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the. I drew in my hand till Dulé came along, so I never got to see it. We gave children everywhere permission to say "suck it" in front of their parents, and I think that's <laughs> probably the show's legacy. That at the end of the day, when you weigh it all out, <laughs> that's I always get. I always get. Have you heard about Pluto? Oh. Yeah. That's Oh, I mean, like, you heard about Pluto? Messed <laughs> <laughs> up, <That's> right? <laughs> I find I myself, like it's not even getting quoted back to me, but I'll just I'll be doing something in the in the middle of the day, and I'll be like, "What? Maggie, <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop." We're 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 really proud of our scripts and our writers and our writing staff, and um, and just had some of the funniest scripts um, at, that we really appreciate talk about those lines you're really talking about I me mean, 95 percent of those are these two knuckleheads um that 
made them up and and we were blessed with uh you know two actors that were having fun for 123 episodes and were constantly trying to find new ways to amuse themselves um and in turn it amused all of us and uh and that's how it remained in all the cuts <laughs> and then and, and uh, took on a life of their own so um that's that's uh that's james and dule in large part on on a lot of those and if we didn't make it up then ed lover made it up yeah. yes. <laughs> come on son come on son come on son is from ed lover i was in my trailer watching his he had a like a youtube thing up his whole series called come on son and i was crying it's the first time i'd ever seen it i text wrote i said dude you got to come in here and watch this thing this thing is hilarious he came over and he was cracking up in the trailer they called us to set and then I think it was a think tank episode, was it? Yeah. And then so we got into this, we got to the set, we get ready to do a scene. And of course, he added come on son into the scene. And I go, don't, don't go Ed Lover on me. And then from there we ran with come on son. <laughs> Just from watching it in my trailer. Yeah, it'd be like every season we'd start a new season and we'd, you know, a lot of times we were down, if we were up in Vancouver, we were there for a couple of days in prep, and then we'd come back down and then we'd start to see that with stuff that was shot in and then in the editing room. And it would take a couple of episodes of each season to, to then figure out what Dulé and James were going to be up to as a runner that would annoy us the entire season. <laughs> and, and then it very quickly turned from being annoyed to like just laughing because it was so ridiculous. But I mean, there's very obscure like the <laughs> like, what is that? I don't know where that came from, but I think that was Dulé, uh, you know, and, and you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> One of the toughest no, no. ones, the one of the toughest ones to push over the mountain, and I'm not even sure that we ever actually did, um, like triumphantly win this. But it was the making things way harder than they should be, whether it's lifting, or pushing, or opening a window. Just a, a simple mundane task required some kind of grunt or extra effort. Right. Um, it wasn't a favorite down south, but I don't. We never. We never. Never gave. I'm fairly sure I, I that and Hensy hated it. They hated it with passion. <laughs> yeah, but at the beginning, because it always, yeah, because then it always came with a, <laughs> which is always funny. Well, and by the way, that because those things or originated in Think Tank, an episode that, that Chris never liked from the script, Andy Berman and I wrote it, and he used to just call it Stink Tank <laughs> as we were shooting it and as we were cutting it. The people who worked on that episode, uh, but Andy and I just we we were we were dead set on doing it. Uh, I think that, that sometimes you you feel like I could use a little more eh, out of the whole thing. But uh, I, I to me the ones that I'm the most excited about are the obscure ones that actually they just come up every once in a while and they didn't make it in the full on hear hear about Pluto. And uh, to me, there's two of them and they're both Gus. One. Of them is that he, on his business card he would write his cell phone number reversed on the other side but in pencil like that's the move the player move that he writes it in pencil proudly that kills me every time but the one that that comes out of that too is that gus has two phones one of them is his play a phone yeah. and uh <laughs> and we, we finally stepped that out while we we're shooting the indiana sean episode and Terry only received this dagger from across the room, and we needed a conversation that would make sense and give him enough time to walk this incredible distance, sneak out, steal this thing under the guise of these bad guys. So we were just sitting there and like, how do we do it? So he says, well, what about the player phone? He has two things. And then we, we started making up this conversation about his, Gus's player phone. And it was Gus explaining why he needed GPS on his phone, because players go walking deep into the woods, hyperthermia <laughs> and so they need gps <laughs> and somehow it was a cool thing that they would go <laughs> hiking deep into the woods get lost develop hypothermia <laughs> that kills me that's the kind of joke that just makes me so happy because the more you analyze it the more is like what is going on here mm -hmm. so that that to me the play of phone is is our show in a nutshell i feel like i could talk to you to you guys for like hours on end but unfortunately we're out of time um but before we you know i know before we wrap lastly like what do you want to say to the psychos who have stuff by 
you guys and the show like all these years. Do you have a message for them? Well, I would hope the psychos know uh, how much we love them um, and, and also know that we wouldn't still be making movies and doing panels and uh, having reunions and binge so we know we like to think of them as our partners on this crazy journey and they're just as uh, essential to the adventure as we are and so we're stoked that they get another chapter that they earned and that they were that they fought for and that they loudly demanded and you know we're all we're all in this together and i i can't imagine another set of of fans for anything being as devout and uh, and and the best type of psychotic that they are, so uh, they know they they know how much we love them, though. Yeah. And let me let me just add let me just add to that. Suck it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, son. I mean, <laughs> that's the best way to end this. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, and I, you know, hope you all keep on your calendars. Um, to stream Psych 2 Last to Come Home on Peacock. And uh, you can also stream the entire series and Psych the movie uh, when that streaming service launches. But nice. before we sign off, um, here's an exclusive sneak peek at the first four minutes of the movie. Enjoy. Dad? Yes, Carl? There's something I gotta know, and I don't want you to spare my feelings. I can handle the truth. Okay, son, you have my word. What's on your mind? When I grow up, will I be able to grow a beard like that? You're a Lassiter. And Lassiter men have been growing legendary face wigs for generations. It's a king's beard, born in your blood, perfected through centuries. But never forget, it's not the beard that makes the king. I know, I know. It's the queen. That's right, son. We're almost there. dog here to rescue you from your own handsomeness that dog's chief fix he was he kept biting our daughter affection gnawing is what the vet called it he called it a rabies show either way the chief gus and i have come to a little agreement she set him loose in my office and sped away in her car but then you called us to come down here and the whole thing just felt like a win-win that dog is eating my foot morrissey stop it. stop it stop it stop it excuse me carlton i didn't realize you had visitors oh whoa 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 sorry no pets pets I'm sorry, I... No. Oh, <laughs> that's Morrissey. <laughs> He's a therapy dog. Does he have a vest? He does, though he prefers to call it a waistcoat. I think you'll find it all checks out. Hmm. This is an old Theraflu t-shirt with tape over the flu and PY in Sharpie. You're good. One point for you, Dolores. <laughs> my name is Sean Spencer, and this is my partner, Bill Poopingtons. No. Sean, Sean what? Sidebar. All right. Carlton, what is happening right now? Let it go. Yes. Bill Poopington's 
What kind of nickname is that? Transylvania Dutch. Why? No, Sean. No more embarrassing nicknames, especially in front of peers and professionals. <laughs> Don't be the night your dad fell asleep inside your mom. We can't just stop doing bits we've been doing for 10 years. We have fans. They have expectations. There'll be a huge backlash. Sean, we are two dumbasses. We do not have fans. From now on, I do the nickname. No, no, no. Absolutely not. That's disgusting. Counter proposal. You have right of refusal until we land on one you like. It's a band-aid, but okay, for now. Sure. I'm terribly sorry, Dolores. What I meant to say was, my name is Sean Spencer. This is my full-fledged partner, all the pips in one. Accepted. All right. Hello. Could you fellas take a little walk with me? Hmm. Lassie, is that what I think it is? <laughs>